This video includes uh, problems on conservation of linear momentum. Uh, so our first problem here says, uh, uh, during a circus act, uh, a performer thrills the crowd by catching a cannonball that's shot at him. All right, so they give us the, the mass of the cannonball. They tell us that um, the horizontal component is 8 meters per second, and um, that the performer is on frictionless roller skates. So the question is, what is the recoil velocity of the performer? Uh, so let me can draw a before and after for this. So here's our before. I will draw a cannonball traveling at, um, label it as a V initial, and we'll draw our performer here on roller skates. Perfect. Right. So then afterward, the performer has caught the uh, cannonball, and the whole system should recoil. Right. So so we expect the cannonball and performer to both recoil at some speed, we'll call it V final. Okay, so um, maybe let's write down some things that we know first. So we know we are given the mass of the ball as uh, 10 kilograms. We're given V initial, that's for the cannonball labeled on the diagram, as 8 meters per second. We're given the mass of the performer, which is 65. And we are looking for V final. This is what we're solving for. OK, so we're going to do um, conservation of momentum. So we write that as uh, the total momentum initial is equal to the total momentum final. Okay, so we notice this is a vector equation, but if we look at our problem, maybe draw some axes, um, all of the interesting stuff is all in one dimension, right? It's all in what we've labeled as the x direction. So this vector equation can simplify to just stuff in the x direction. Okay, so we're going to add up all of the momentum before and set it equal to all of the momentum afterward. So maybe we could write... Um, the mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball plus the mass of the performer times the velocity of the performer equals um, the same thing afterward, but we recognize that this is now a single object, right? Or we could treat it that way. So we're going to say mass of the uh, ball plus mass of the performer times V final. Right. Algebraically, this is the same as if I had written this separately, but it's convenient to do this, um, and it also kind of represents what's going on. So in this equation, we recognize that um, the velocity of the performer initially is zero. Uh, so I can, I can cross that term off right away. All right, so that simplifies things a little bit. Um, so maybe I can just plug in some numbers now. The mass of the ball is 10 kilograms. The velocity of the ball, um, what I believe was VB here is actually V initial, right? So that's 8 meters per second. And that equals uh, the sum of the masses. So that's 10 kilograms plus 65 kilograms times the final velocity. So if you do that math, you end up with um, 1.0666, it continues. Um, and if we look at the number of sig figs that we have in this problem, we should round this to 3. So it's 1.07 meters per second. Right. We also notice that this came out positive, 
meaning that the system moves to the right, which is what we expected maybe uh, instinctively. So the second problem uh, is slightly more involved. Um, it involves a bowling ball uh, colliding with a bowling pin. Uh, the bowling pin is scattered at some angle uh, with some speed, and we want to know what is the um, velocity, so the speed and direction, of the bowling ball after this collision. <clears throat> so again, we'll draw a situation here. Here's our before. So beforehand we have the bowling ball with some V initial <clears throat> approaching this bowling pin. And afterward, it's a little more complicated than the previous problem. Uh, the bowling pin uh, leaves this collision at some uh, velocity, actually it's 15 meters per second. Um, I'm just going to label it as VP for V-pin. Um, so this is V-pin. And they tell us it leaves at 85 degrees to the initial direction of the bowling ball. So initially, the bowling ball is traveling in this direction. So this angle is 85 degrees. So I haven't drawn it quite steep enough, but um, since it's labeled here, the math will work out. Right? Uh, so we can imagine here what the bowling ball should do. Um, it should still be going to the right. Right, a bowling ball weighs a lot more than a bowling pin, so it's probably going to continue traveling to the right, um, but it will have bounced off uh, slightly downward. So if we draw the bowling ball here, um, it's probably going to be traveling something like this. So we can label this as V port for the ball and label that as a theta. So that's a reasonable diagram for what's going on here. So we're solving for VB, like the size of this, and theta. Um, so maybe it's a useful thing to collect, um, collect our knowledge, collect the things that we know. So right here, known values. Uh, we're given the mass of the bowling ball as 5.5 kilograms. We're given the initial speed as 9 meters per second. Uh, we know the mass of the pin, uh, 0.85 kilograms. We're also given the um, speed of the pin afterward as 15 meters per second. And again, we're solving for, uh, in fact, I'll just write it this way, find uh, V, B, and theta. Um, so we're going to approach this uh, similarly to the previous problem. Uh, we're going to rely on uh, conservation of uh, momentum. Right? So conservation of momentum again states that the um, total initial momentum is unchanged. Right? So the total momentum before equals the total momentum after. Again, this is a vector equation, so we're going to write this in x and y directions. So uh, quickly, I'm going to break the velocity in this case into um, x and y components, right? And then all I have to do is multiply those velocities, those components of velocities, by the mass of each object to get the momentum, right? So I can break this into uh, x and y and x and why I uh, failed to label axes here, but uh, you can see, uh, I'll label it right here. We're choosing what we typically do. Okay, so let me label these. I'm going to do my best to label them. This looks like a V, B, Y. 
this one would be VBX, this would be VPY, this one's VPX. Okay, so um, we're going to write this in the X and Y directions. So let's do uh, Y first. Okay, we don't have to, but um, why not? So we can write this as uh, M B times V initial Y. Right, and we could also add um, mass of the pin times its initial velocity, but we know that it's zero from our diagram, from our uh, before and after, so I'm not even going to include it here. Uh, so for afterward, we can say mass of the ball times um, v ball y um, plus mass of the pin times v pin y. Okay, so uh, on the left-hand side here, we know that this is not moving up or down. So VY initial is also zero. So I could have just left it off, but it's good to be explicit about this. So it looks like I have um, zero momentum in the Y direction, which means the sum of the final Y direction momenta also has to be zero. Right, so I could plug in some numbers here. What I should get is... Um, zero equals uh, 5.5, that's uh, kilograms, times VBY, all right, that's related to what I'm looking for, uh, plus um, the mass of the pin, which is 0.85, times its um, y direction velocity, right? And the y direction velocity for this is um, 15 meters per second times a sine of 85. So 15 times sine of 85. Okay, if you solve this equation for VBY, you get, um, I'm going to slide this up a little bit. Uh, you get that VBY is um, 2.31 meters per second, and it's actually negative. Right? And that's indicative of uh, the fact that this thing's moving downward, which makes sense in our picture. If, it, if the pin uh, flies, up, uh, flies off uh, in the upward direction, the ball must be flying in the negative direction. Uh, direction, right? So this is part of our answer. Okay, so now I can do the same thing in the x direction. So I can write that uh, p initial x equals p final x Right, so um, I'll write something very similar to this equation right here. Right, MB V initial X equals MB V ball X plus MP VP X. Okay, so now I can plug maybe some numbers into here. Um, so that's uh, 5.5, that's in kilograms, times um, VIX. Well, VI is all in the X direction, so that's simply these 9 meters per second. And on the right-hand side, I have 0.55 kilograms times VBX. Plus... Uh, 0.85 kilograms times uh, 15 meters per second times a cosine of 85. So it's 15 times cosine of 85. There. Okay, so if I solve that for VBX, 
what I get is uh, 8.99 meters per second, which is very close to what I had originally. Um, and that makes sense because this bowling ball is, is quite a bit more massive than the uh, bowling pin. Okay, and the, the pin uh, moves off almost vertically, right, at 85 degrees, almost vertically, so it carries off very little forward momentum, so the, the bowling ball has to take most of it, right, in order for uh, momentum to be conserved in both the x and y directions. Okay, so I'm pretty much there. I just need to find theta and vb, right? So to find um, the full vb, I can just use Pythagorean theorem, right? Just to say vb squared is vbx squared plus vby squared. All right, I'm not going to plug these numbers in. Uh, I'm not going to write them down here, but if you do that, um, that calculation, what you get is 9.28 uh, meters per second. All right, so there's part of the answer. And then if you look at this right triangle right here, um, the uh, theta here can be found from these sides if you take the arc tangent of VBY over VBX. Uh, Right, so uh, theta is arc tangent of um, VBY over VBX. And I actually will plug the numbers in here uh, because I want to make this point. Um, VBY, we found it to be negative, but we're using a right triangle, and the definition of tangent doesn't have a negative. Uh, side in it. We don't define this as negative or positive, it's just a length. Okay, so I'm going to plug in the positive value here. Um, if you don't do that, uh, you could get an answer that you're not expecting. It'll be related to the angle you're solving, um, but it may not be exactly what you're expecting. So when you do this math, you get that theta equals 14.4 degrees, and now we've completely described what happens to the bowling ball after this collision. Right? We have the speed and the direction.